we're driving along this road that they call Ruta de Flores. It's supposed to go through a few quaint little authentic type towns. Some of them have festivals on the weekends. And it's supposed to take us right through the middle of all of the coffee plantations. And it's supposed to be a really pretty drive. We don't know that much about it other than everybody says that you should drive the road. So we're gonna drive the road, see what happens when we get down here. We do know we're headed to a pretty good sounding coffee shop. Okay, we're at this coffee place, which is supposed to be a pretty neat experience. We don't know much about it, but we're gonna go in, have us a cup of coffee. All right, so it's like we're in a garden. Oh, there's a bird right over my head. Look at him. <laughs> and there's just orchids hanging all around us. What do you think, Kurt? That's a pretty, trippy little garden area a lot of beautiful flowers they're all working towards them and uh they got a little eccentric odds and ends everywhere so we'll see so we both ordered us a coffee kurt got a latte i got something called a bomb bomb coffee and i have the spanish menu and snow has the english menu <laughs> all right so here is my bomb bomb coffee a double shot of espresso with condensed milk, whipped cream, finished off nicely with a little cinnamon. What do you think about my coffee drink, Kurt? I think I need one. <laughs> so, I forgot to film these before we devoured them. They don't look very good now. But, what were they, Kurt? They were like, uh... Plantanos, so fried bananas, but inside they had like a little cream filling. Mm -hmm. And so they were really, really tasty. Sweet, and they go great with the coffee as well. Yeah. And we just met the owner and his son. Yeah. And got a lot of cool information that we'll be sharing with y'all while we tour this place. The bad news is, is he's a Florida Gator. So That's I right. apologize for that, guys. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. Here. Let but me just turn least, this off of Kurt for a minute. Don't listen to him. But at least, Go Gators. But at least the flowers are Seminole colors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ending this vlog now. Well, since you have to travel from such a long distance, such a far away see, I can take a couple minutes and show you around. Yeah, it's beautiful, this is, yeah. This is a family business, as you probably know. And my dad and my mom are the owners. I, you know, I just help here do some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Entre Nubes is, a, again, a family-owned business that is specialized in serving typical food. Mm -hmm. We don't serve like international food, like yeah. sushi or stuff like that. We don't do that. Um, but what set us apart is that we serve this typical food in a place where you, after the meal, you can come and enjoy mm. a tour in the garden. Nice. You can relax for a couple of minutes, forget about the stress, enjoy the flowers. We have uh, some seasonal flowers, which means only a part of the year we can enjoy them. But we have all, also plants that produce flowers all year long, like oh. hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. They produce, they're like this all year. All the hydrangeas do that all year. Yes. And we start by Keeping the plantation, learning how to process our coffee, learn how to brew and do, you know, a proper technique, how to make the beverage, and keep the garden. So we are coming in from a transition from the restaurant, the garden area, which is all of this, and the coffee plantation that is over there. Uh, Everything in the same place. So every cup of coffee that we serve, every bag of coffee that we sell, is either produced here, 
or process here because we don't produce enough to supply our own demand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We only produce as much. Uh, oh, let's have a, a nice look here. We oh, only pretty. As much just to satisfy the espresso needs. Uh -huh. All of the menu, of all the beverages, we produce as much as to get all the espresso from the year, but it's not enough to supply for the cappuccinos, for the regular drip coffee, for the coffee bags. Luckily, and thank God, uh, the demand has increased too much. And it's very difficult to get more land in the area. Mm. Uh, if you get a, a good price, a good area, it's too far away. Make a good business with the other producers. Let's solve the problem other producers are facing. The same problems we face. They will usually give you around 50 bucks. 50, so that's for how much coffee? For 100 pounds. Okay, so so the international price is 140. Locally, you sell it for 50, and then they distribute it. By the time they get it to the international dealer, that'd be 140. Yes, they will. From those 90 dollars, is supposed to the operational cost, and yeah. you can understand that the, the yeah. ship and mm. but it's it's too little. They take too because much. The production cost is 45 dollars. Mm. So for every 100 pounds, you are making five dollars. Wow. Wow. So it's five cents a pound. That's that not you're okay. Making and you only get a production once a year. So you have to divide those five cents between 12 so you can get your, how much money yeah. monthly coffee is giving I to see. you. Yeah. So will you ever leave poverty? Will you, can you actually succeed? Can mm. you actually improve? The answer obviously is no. 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 So, so we cannot change market, so why fight against something you cannot change? But well, we can compete in our market. Yeah. So we start fixing this reality for many producers. I'm buying their coffee and I do not go and say, okay, I'm paying this much. I say, how, how much do you want? Huh? Uh, the market could set 70, but the cost, the cost is very high and the coffee is very good. How much you want? And if we need it, we will take it. Huh? So producers are very happy with us working this way. Yeah. Customers are very happy. Yeah. And I am in a very small scale, but yeah. I'm allowing myself to guarantee my coffee supply for the next years because I can only produce so much. Right. Uh, for example, what we have here is the beginning of our coffee farm and these small plants that you are seeing in front of us right now are just recently planted. We planted during the lockdown last year. Wow. We were 100 days in a lockdown mm -hmm. or so. So the company, Entre Noves, with my with my parents and my wife, and my kids, we all decided, okay, we're going to keep all the jobs here. And we're going to keep paying them. Yeah. Because the government didn't, it's not going to help you. Yeah. yeah. And we decided, okay, we're going to keep you. And we're going to keep paying you as nothing happened. So we're going to use our savings. But yeah. we will support your family. But in return, I want you to work. Yeah. Agricultural activities were allowed because, you know, open Farming. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Farming, yes. So all of a sudden I have like 32 new farmers. farmers. <laughs> so it was very easy to do. I have an excess of, of employees. Yeah. So in about two months, we were able to take the majority of the coffee plants, the old ones, and put new ones. Uh, so this is one year old, exactly. We began mm -hmm. in March last uh, year. Okay. Then we are in March, one year later. We hope that this will start producing December 20, 2022. Okay. That is the goal. And we have two varieties. The one that we have in front of us is called Bourbon. And there is a small trail there. After the trail and uphill, it's Pacamara. years old with okay. this we start learning because there is not a school that you can go and take class and they will teach you how to use it in time uh, once we learn we learn that coffee works and people like our coffee we decided okay we're gonna do a larger investment which is getting this new beneficio beneficio is the spanish word to say coffee processing plant 
Ah. Okay. It also means benefit if you translate literally. Yeah, yeah. But if you say I'm going to the beneficiary, you're saying a place. So when you talk about a place, it's a place where the crosses come. Okay. This is beneficial. You are here. There's an over, so we will throw the coffee here. This is the same machine as over there. Okay, so this takes the pop off. Yeah, but larger than the other one. And this sit the pulp over there yes. and the Good. bean. The bean over here. And the beans come all the way here. It, it, this will help us to clean the coffee because not a hundred percent of all the berries can be the, the can be deep pulp. So some of some of the cherries are still here. Yeah. And this thing traps those berries. Gotcha. And only allowed for the coffee bean to continue the flow. So the coffee berries that were unable to continue, they fall here. I put a bucket there and I collect them. That means those berries are too small because they were able to go through this machine and come out unharmed. So they are very tiny. They are not bad per se, but they're not as good. Yeah. So they go over there. Over there. there. Okay. But at the end of the day, it's up to you as a as a supplier of food, because this is food, mm. how clean you, you want your product to be. Yeah. There's not good or bad here, it depends on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If your market is not a market that really knows, really cares, and doesn't pay for the quality, then don't clean it, man. Yeah. You're, you're wasting it. Yeah. But if you want to have in your love and actually clean it, be the best. Be the best means be the best. a lot of extra steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is all that stainless steel? Yes, all of them. So you have what? You have one motor. There are three engines. Three, three motors. One, two, and three. Ah, see. First, what do we do with this coffee? This coffee is something that we sell uh, without a brand mm. because the, the coffee is not good enough for me. For your name. The coffee doesn't mean it's not good. It's yeah. just our personal yeah. and internal standards. It's too for your brand. For your for brand, brand, brand yeah, yeah. Yeah. you have something specific. Yeah. So this is without brand and it's going to be sold by local markets. Pupuserias, which are great, you know, technical yeah. food, yeah. usually pay very cheap, but they don't expect good yeah. quality yeah. coffee. Yeah. But me saying not good enough for me, this is still, still great good coffee. coffee. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do we do with the coffee? Once it comes out for the beneficiaries, still very wet, we need to start the drying process. Well, we, the first step will be put it in a box for a day, for it to drip the excess of water. Once that day has, has passed, we put it inside this machine. And a big blower is the same principle as the, the dryer at home. Yeah. No agitation. No, no need because it's not so big. Uh, yeah. How long does it take? 24 hours. 24 hours. Oh, wow. 24 hours, coffee comes out and you coffee comes in. Then we need to wait at least two months for the coffee to mature the flavor. Oh, yeah. oh. If I do, it's a little bit of aging. Some people say, oh, it's like wine. Well, not like wine because uh, two-year-old coffee tastes horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we keep our coffee for yeah. the whole year? Because coffee is produced only once a year. Right. Yeah. For two months, at least in at least in this area, it's two months. Yes. The next 10 months, there is no coffee, so you need to save it someplace. The coffee cherry in the plant, it's perfect. Yeah. The only thing you can do from that point after you pick it is ruin it. <laughs> if, you, if you pick it too early, if you pick it too late, if it takes too long to be processed on the beneficial, if you're gonna do natural, natural means that you pick it from the plant and then you dry it. Yeah. But if it takes too long, it will start to rot. So there are a lot of steps that you, everything can go wrong. Yeah. So you need to be on it, you have to have very well trained people to prevent all of this. So how long, how many years to perfect y'all's coffee stuff? I hope I never get it right. <laughs> okay. Because perfection is the horizon. Ah, we should, what we a are, perfect answer. We are never, we are not supposed to reach it. Yeah. We are supposed to work in that direction. Ah, yeah. yeah, like your style. That so, was awesome. So I'm still working on it. Right. It's getting very good. Eh? It's very good yeah, coffee. It was great coffee. I love yeah. it. Humble aside, coffee has gotten very good, but for what I dreamed to eventually be, 
Oh, we are still very it's long far ways behind. there. But you again, more light. I hope to be to be able to get and you know older because you never know. But hopefully, <laughs> I get to be old and still looking for ways to improve. I don't want to say, okay, I finished. There is nothing I cannot yeah. do. Do you have niños? I have two daughters. Uh, yes, yeah, two beautiful. One is uh, eight years old, and the other one is six. Uh -huh. uh, and they love coming here. They know the names of the machines. Uh, they know the plants. They uh, help so. harvest. So they will maybe continue to work towards the perfection. They, they love drinking coffee. Uh, they know. Great. <laughs> they don't usually don't do it themselves because they cannot yeah, reach. But they they know. Yeah. Perfect. They can they can do it eventually. So hopefully they will take this for the future. So what we have here is a coffee roaster from the from Prova. The model is called Prova 2012, which means 12 kilos or about 26 pounds. We purchased this machine around three years ago in Germany. So how does it work? We bring the coffee from over there yeah. in bags. Uh, we know how much we're gonna roast. We turn it on and you can come closer please. We turn it on here. And we, this is a touch screen and we put, the con, we put in the conditions. How hot do we want the machine? How fast do I want it to spin? Uh, how strong I want the airflow, the output of gases to be. Depends on the recipe, depends on the flavor you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. You might want or not to affect these conditions. But what we Something do, else you have to learn and play with on your own, right? Because if you go to the internet, you can <laughs> find someone who has the same machine. Yeah. And someone who's also roasting Bourbon. Yes, but the Bourbon they're roasting, probably different altitude. Yeah. Different altitude makes it, if it's higher, makes it higher density, takes longer to roast. Mm. Less density makes it faster. Mm. So what you learn in the, in the internet could serve maybe as a reference. So in the end, you have to know by yourself and do trial and error, several roasting, what is the best profile for my coffees and for my customers. Salvadorians, for what I have found, after many, many, many trials. Yeah. <laughs> some good, some not so good. Some not so good, not bad, but not so good, <laughs> is that people like a dark beverage. I mean, they want it to look really dark, but they don't like the bitterness of oh. it. Yeah. so it's very contradictory <laughs> so how do you do it with normal regular equipment or you know more cheap equipment it's impossible to do it. but then since you can do it with this. this we were able to do a darker rose in terms of color but the bitterness level didn't go so up yeah. it was still good so from the time we got this with the increase of sales of coffee, we were able to pay it in one year. Oh. So once it's ready, we open the hatch, coffee will fall here, and it's a cooling tray. It cools. It starts cools in about two minutes. It goes from 450 Fahrenheit, which is the Hot. end temperature. It's even hotter when yeah. you finish, to room temperature in two minutes. Oh, wow. wow. So how long does it take to roast 25 pounds? Depends on what I want to achieve and the purpose, but in general, it should take about 12 to 13 minutes. Huh. And I haven't talked too much, but the most important part of, of all of this is the people. It's the people, yeah. We knew that keeping our people during the pandemic, during the, the lockdown, it was not only the humane thing to do, but it was also like a smart business move. Yeah. If we lose all of our people that for so many years we have trained and we have care for them and we lose them, we can do the, the sacrifice, we can make it happen. Yeah. So we made it happen and now that things are getting better yeah. somewhat, <laughs> uh, we have been the fastest recovering company in the oh. whole area. Yeah. That's nice. beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's all because of them. To people. Yeah, 100%. 100%. That's the story did you guys friends. enjoy it? We did. It it's was so beautiful. Amazing. It was beautiful. Ah, yeah. It's amazing. It's such a good tour. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a wonderful day. Yes. We didn't start it. Up, up, up in a painted cup. I will pour my love from a cloud above. So bright I can see the lights Taking you up and above the blue sky Tastes good to be drinking all of the honey sweet brew of ours Up, up in a painted cup Right in the sky like a firefly 
like a firefly. I believe to believe is to feel the fire grow within. I believe to believe is to see how the present comes from dreams. Up, up, up in a painted cup, I will paraglide across the sky. Let flowers and tiny hearts shape in a line in the cup of ours. So sweet like a honeybee can buzz around a honey tree. Up, up in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Mm, like a firefly. What a pleasant surprise. We didn't really know what to expect when we arrived here. We knew they had like a good little coffee shop and restaurant and uh, it turned out to be more beautiful than expected. They just had a beautiful flower garden. Wow, just absolutely stunning flowers all throughout. Nice walkways. Uh, they had these dangling plants. I need to learn what they are. I saw them at Atalan. But then you walk up the hill down this, or up, <laughs> this canopy path of trees. It's beautiful through the coffee fields and they have giant bamboo which you guys now know that I love and you can hear the birds just chirping away everywhere now I will tell you it is very hard to video the birds I was able to get a couple of them but I apologize if it's not Quetzal quality but anyway we're gonna enjoy this place for a little bit and have some more of this delicious coffee they make the absolute best coffee and I got to be honest with you, even though this place is pretty small, it is really unique. And the people, we met the owner and his son. He took us on a beautiful tour. So much information on processing the coffee. If you guys remember, we sort of saw the, uh, the coffee tour in Guatemala where we saw them work in the fields, the family work in the fields, and bring it back. They sent the latter part of the processing of the coffee off. So we didn't really get to experience that in Guatemala, but we definitely got to experience that here. It was so unique learning about that and understanding how important coffee is to the culture in Central America and just enjoy, enjoying the journey and, and learning so much about what Central America and especially El Salvador has to offer. The loyalty of a woman is measured when his man has nothing and the loyalty of a man is measured when he has everything. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. If you liked this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you know when we put out new videos. To see behind the scenes action and help support our journey, head over to our YouTube membership page. You can find the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in a few days.